Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to another episode in the series Dawa Ilallah as we look at comparative sciences in helping us to be more effective in our Dawa, especially when we're calling people to submit to the one true God, to submit to Allah. And we've been looking at many of the doctrines that the church holds to be true that are actually based on a person's opinion or based on something that happened uh, many, many years before we actually find the text coming along. Sometimes we find the doctrine in existence before the text was even written, before the Bible was even written. And so we find that these things, it's almost like we put the cart before the horse. And so almost every doctrine within Christianity, bar none, is a creation of a man who came before looking for an actual text in the Bible to substantiate it. That is very, very dangerous to do. That's why you'll go into error. Today we have a number of churches in the world who believe that entertainment of the masses is more important than the content and training of the masses. So what does that mean? It's more of a party time when you go to church than a time for you to learn what is right and what is wrong. The church has become a playground. It has become the entertainment place. And there is a very important question that I have for Christians in the world today. Where did you get this doctrine from? Who said that you should be entertaining and trying to make people feel comfortable and happy than rather giving the truth? I call it tickling the ears of the parishioners, of the members. This is what the modern church is doing. This is what the church is doing worldwide. They are basically entertaining people, making them feel comfortable in coming to church. Instead of challenging them and making them think, why do you believe what you believe? Where do you come up with these ideas from that you're telling people? And so it's become about entertainment in the modern church today more than about the content. Most modern churches today are more concerned and involved with entertaining the masses than actually giving some decent teaching. If you had to remove the staging, the lights, the camera, the action in the churches, you had to remove the fancy sound system, the big screen TVs, I wonder how many people would still come to that church. If a church was maybe in an open warehouse somewhere, a rented warehouse, maybe in not so great floors, plastic chairs, and you brought out the plastic chairs that are uncomfortable and you sat there, and the pastor or the priest stood up and he gave you a three-hour sermon, how many people do you think would remain? They already moan at the priest and say, hey, pastor, 15 minutes, way too long. We need at least three hours for praise and worship. Have you noticed some of these Pentecostal charismatic churches? The sermon is 15 minutes, if that, maybe five minutes, most of them. And that 15 minutes, if it is 15 minutes, 10 minutes is taken up how much money you need to give. And five minutes is taken up on self-glory. Today, I did this, we did that, I am this, I am that. And so the message is nowhere. And then the praise and worship session takes place. You know the praise and worship where the guitars get up, entertainment, guys with these long fringes that hang in front of them, emo kids, to entertain. And that goes on and 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 on. I try to watch God TV because that's where I get my theology, where I get my ideas from. I look at them and I go, wow, you just wrote the whole talk for me. And so I watch God TV. But sometimes I just can't. I just wish I could fast forward because there is so much nonsense that they do. I mean, they have a famous, supposedly, to them it's famous, a lecturer coming. And she or he, normally it's a she. So you have the right person. It's sales, sales tactics. She stands there, she talks for five minutes. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> she stands there for five minutes and she does her sermon. She's been invited all the way to this country to come and do a talk. And then she gets some... People coming up there, giving, testifying, telling their story, whatever it is. And then she sits down and have a praise and worship for the next two hours. I don't know how much they paid that woman to come there. But if they paid her to come there and talk for five minutes, they paid her too much. And this is the general consensus today. You put a man in front of the market, and I told you a couple of weeks ago about there's one man on God TV. One person. I'm telling you that man's going to become a Muslim. Every time he talks, I see him coming closer and closer to Islam. And his talks go on for a long time. They're not five-minute specials. 
And this man is starting to realize, don't drink alcohol. Don't eat pork. We need to pray more than we are praying. He talks about Muslims and he says to them, we should be looking at how Muslims are behaving. We should try to mimic their behavior. This man is coming closer. That's how I used to talk when I started getting closer and closer to Islam. So there's one good guy. Maybe I'm spoiling him for him. Maybe they'll get rid of him now for God's sake. Maybe that's what he needs. That's what happened to me. As soon as they realized that, they kicked me out. They said, no, take a year off. That was the best thing that could have happened to me. Because that when I really started to question what I believe. So we see generally it's all about entertainment. It's about party time. Where did this come from? Do we find that this was the teaching of the Jews? Do we find that this is the teaching of the early Christians? Was this even the teachings of the first corrupter of the New Testament, Paul? Did he come and teach it? No. These guys were firm. These guys were strict. There was no time for entertainment and playing around. They were firm in what they believed. And today we find that the church today is about entertaining. It's about the gimmicks. It's about the gadgets. It's about the toys. We don't do that. We don't use gimmicks. We might have an object lesson, but we don't use gimmicks. And you'll find that if we had to take the challenge to the church and say to them, get rid of all that stuff, have a guy speak for three hours and sit on plastic chairs and a mic system that comes on and off, that church would be empty. They'd all move over to the other guy that's got air-conditioned rooms, he's got the PowerPoint presentation, he has the nice band playing in the front there. I remember in the town that I grew up in, in Dundee, northern Natal in South Africa, we had the smallest church when I was a youngster, the priest that we had, because he had nothing there. Literally had nothing. His name was Pastor Bull. So that was enough to keep everybody away. And this guy was one of those old Texan-style priests. You know, no gimmicks. Long sermons. And I promise you there were like 10 people in the church. That was it. Everybody was at the other churches where they had all the fancy stuff. We were only 10 people in our church. Literally, we had the smallest church in the whole town. Nobody went there. It was called the Bible Baptist Church <laughs> because they taught the Bible and they were Baptists and there was nobody there because they had no entertainment. They all went to the other church. There was a church called Faith Outreach. Everybody went there because they had musicians and dancing around. We had nothing. We just had the pastor and his kids and his wife and me. That was about it. There was this immediate family, him and me. Not even my parents came there. They found it too boring to go there. They went to faith outreach. The world wants entertainment, especially Christians. And the church, you want to test it? We have to look at what it was like in the days when it first started. There was no entertainment. It was based on proper teaching. But nobody wants proper teaching. They want to have their ears tickled. Someone play with their hair, tickle their back so they can fall asleep. Just like happens when you watch TV, except for Peace TV. Of course, it never happens with Peace TV. When other TV comes on, what happens? Your mouth falls open. Huh? <laughs> and you sit there watching, and then what happens to your head? It goes. And your head falls to the side, your mouth falls open, and you're like a zombie. Uh, so entertaining. Have you watched people when they watch TV? I love it. I like to turn my chair and watch people when they're watching TV so they don't notice it. I can laugh my head off. You see the, all the expressions? <laughs> they do all the expressions of the actors. And this is what happens in the church. We just want to be brain dead and entertained. Nobody wants to learn. The mosque is about serious stuff. It's about connecting to your creator. People don't want serious. My brother, he's the funniest person in the world. He's a good Muslim. But sometimes he does strange things. And he doesn't mind me talking because he's the object lesson that I'm allowed to talk about with his permission. So sometimes he'll say to me, please, Arib, get out of the religious mode. Just be normal for once. <laughs> and I have to say to him, but this is my normal. This is who I am. Even my wife says, but you're not like on Peace TV. <laughs> and I said, but Peace TV, I have to be more dynamic. I'm not always energy. Sometimes I'm quiet, but I'm always in the same mode. There's no like on and off switch. That now I'm in Muslim mode and now I'm not in Muslim mode. There's no like on and off switch. There's, you're always the same. And I'm always going to use the opportunity to correct or preach or teach to myself even. This is what we need. Every day we should correct ourselves or be corrected by someone. We should never be offended. 
We should never be upset when somebody corrects us. We should be grateful. We should thank them and say thank you for correcting me. But use wisdom. There's a right and a wrong way of saying things. My brother and myself are like water and oil. We get on very well together and make very good salad dressing, but they're not the greatest when it comes to looking at certain topics. I'll explain to you why after we get back from this break. Dava Trading Program. Absolutely free. Your golden opportunity to become a dynamic dai to effectively convey the message of Islam widely. Allah says in the Quran, "Waman hasan kala min madai Allah wa amil salihon." Allah inna min muslimin. Who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of the Lord? Walk righteousness and say that I'm Muslim. The Dawa training program is planned and conducted personally by Dr. Zakir Naik and will, inshallah, be held over 33 days from 16 January to 29. February 2016, five days a week from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Interested applicants should be males between 18 to 40 years. Understand and speak English very fluently. Have good knowledge of Islam. Have passion for Dawa and becoming a full-time Dai. The best profession according to the Quran, according to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, is that of a Dai. Application forms available on www.dawatraining.org. Last date to accept applications is 20th November 2015. Kindly apply to info at dawatraining.org or call plus nine one seven five zero six three double eight four seven six. Dawa Training Program. Your best chance to become a dynamic guy. This world has never seen, and will never see, anyone like the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah chose the best of characteristics for him. In his intellect and manner, his beauty and his appearance, he was the best in every. I am Muhammad bin Abdul. Join me to learn more about his beautiful description and his incomparable character in Know Your Prophet. Get an in-depth description of the most popular and incomparable character in the world in Know Your Prophet, Peace Be Upon Him. Next on Peace TV. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We were talking before the break about how my brother and myself are very different to one another, but we both work together pretty well. He is a person who likes a softer, more gentle Islam. Not so strict. He doesn't like the very hard strictness. He doesn't like to be corrected. He doesn't want people correcting him. You have to be very gentle. But when he talks, he can be very, very harsh. But he doesn't like people doing the same. He doesn't like his own medicine. I'm the opposite. I like harsh talk and I like harsh medicine. I like you must be straightforward with me. Tell me, but we have to be careful the way we say things. Even if you have a person who wants a softer approach, and even if you have someone who likes a harder approach, you still have to be careful. It's all about the delivery. It's the way you present the talk. You know, if you've done something wrong at home, and you want to give your wife a gift, it's all about presentation. If you go into the room and you say, "Yeah, sorry," that ain't gonna work. She's gonna get another hiding. You know, she's gonna go again. It's about presentation. It's the way you do it. You know, the so sorry. You know, I shouldn't have done that this morning. I'm so sorry. I just bought a little thing that she doesn't even care what you bought her. 
It's the presentation that was everything. That's why we put so much emphasis on packaging, advertising. You go buy, you know, the biggest rip-off ever I ever had in my life. I've been ripped off a number of times where you buy something and you go, oh, I'm going to get this, and you go, oh, it's not what I thought. They have in my country this thing called magic fish. You buy this box about that big, and then you've got this fish eggs in there. You pour water, and they're supposed to hatch into fish, and then they miraculously like, grow from eggs to fish. I thought, oh, this will be exciting, especially for kids and that. I bought this big box, and I got it home, and literally there was a box inside about that big. The rest was just packaging. Nothing inside the rest of the box. It's all a lie. So I expected to find this big goldfish bowl or whatever, and literally it was a bowl about that big inside all this packaging. And I was upset. And nothing happened, by the way. The fish never hatched. It's a big lie. So it's all about packaging. Millions all over my country went and bought this big box thinking they're going to find a big goldfish bowl inside because the picture has got a big goldfish bowl and on this big box. In the meantime, there's this tiny little, small little thing inside there. Like, what's the rest of the space for? So even we know that advertisers are very clever. You know, you buy your cornflakes or whatever flakes you eat for breakfast, you know, your breakfast sale. The boxes are getting bigger, but the inside is staying the same. The box is like this big now, like, oh, big super-sized box. And you open it up, and where's the packet? <laughs> you like, turn this thing over, and like one thing falls out. It's getting smaller. It's a ripple. But the advertisers know it's all about packaging. Unfortunately, this is what Christianity is. The box is getting bigger. The content is getting less. It's all about this big box with nothing inside it. We don't use gimmicks. What you know when you see some of the honest packaging, it says actual size. You'll see sometimes you'll see in an advert, you buy something, and it, on the cover it has the picture and it says actual size. That is Islam. What you see on the cover is what you'll see inside the box. Islam is the only religion in the world that its name tells you what, who, and how to practice it. When we say Islam, it means we know who, to Allah, how, to submit, when, daily. It's a continuous process. When you hear the word Christian, what do you know by that word? If you don't know anything about Christianity, you wouldn't know how to practice it, to whom it's referring to, when to do it. Islam is the only religion in the world by its very title. If you knew nothing else about anything, you would know how to follow it because it is so clear. So what you see is what you get. The packaging is correct. Actual size. So we find that the church today has abandoned its original teachings for entertainment and cheap tricks. It's about gimmicks and games. It's not about solid teaching anymore. And even the teaching that it had, no matter how bad it was, no matter how misleading it might have been in the original state, it was far better than it is now. At least there was a chance that you would have been led on to Islam. But now the focus is on entertaining you so that you are spoilt. My father said to me once, he said, what do you do with spoiled things? So I looked at him like, oh, he's going to be one of these object lessons, one of these meetings, because my dad was very rich at things like this. My friends often say to me, why do you speak in riddles? My father's fault because he always had an object lesson with everything. So he said to me once, what do you do with something that's spoiled? So I said, what do you mean? I knew there was a message coming in. So he said, if an apple is spoiled, what do you do with it? I said, well, you throw it away. Meaning if it goes rotten, what do you do? You throw it away. So he says, what do you do with a spoiled child? The same thing. So this was his object lesson about not spoiling me. So I had to work for what I had in life. So the idea is good. Christianity spoilt its followers. So when truth comes along, it doesn't recognize it. When hope is given, it doesn't see it. And it's spoilt. And it's been entertained. So when something tough comes along, which really isn't tough at all. For us, it's not tough. When we look at Islam, people say, it must be so difficult to be a Muslim. All those things you have to do, all those traditions... All those processes, it must be so tiring. Now, I normally turn to the person, if it's a woman, and I say, well, that regiment that you have on putting makeup on you every day, it must be so tiring. And the blow drying of your hair that takes hours every day must be so tiring. 
why don't you just shave all your hair off? And they go, but it's easy. Yeah, so is Islam. When you're not spoiled, when it comes easy for you to do. For us, we don't think of it as a mission. We think of it as a pleasure. We think of it as a privilege. You know how long it takes for a woman to blow dry her hair? I mean, looking at 10, 15, 20 minutes. They don't do it like we do. Have you seen a man blow dry his hair? It's like, shakes his hair up and walks out the room. Some men. I know other men. <laughs> other men, they take longer than the woman. The cosmopolitan men. In my country, you've got the cosmo men. Like, they spend more time on their hair than a mechanic does on your car. It's like, yo, every hair has to be exactly waxed, and there's three different types of conditioner they put on it, and then they wax the ends, and they steam it, and they blow dry it, and they straighten it. And like, you're a guy. Get on with your life. You're spending all your life on your hair. And the wind blows, and it stays perfect. Nothing even moves. It's like you could chisel it. <laughs> so we mustn't be like that. You know, don't go overboard. Guys, come on, let's still be men. I'm not saying be a pig. We must look good, and we must smell good, and we must behave good, but don't go to the extreme that even the women are going, oh, come on now. We've been waiting in the car for a half an hour. When a woman says that to a man, you know it's bad. Okay, you know it's gone too far. So if a man and a woman spend so much time on silly things, cosmetic things like that, and then they're wondering about, oh, you know, it must be so difficult to be a Muslim. Really, it's not. We're talking about 24 minutes of the day. If we add it up, you're a new Muslim, you've just become a Muslim. We're talking about 24 minutes of the day. The whole day, including all our prayers in the beginning. Obviously, when you get better, it will be longer. But in the beginning, we're talking about 24 minutes. Out of the whole 24 hours, to do everything. That's not a mission. You spend more time in traffic. You spend about that much time brushing your teeth and going to the bathroom every day. You spend about that much time in breakfast or lunch or supper. So 24 minutes really is nothing, and it's not all at one time anyway. It's divided into five nice little pieces so that you can do it at your own pace, slowly, in the beginning. Maybe a bit faster in the beginning, but as you get better, it'll go slower. So what we do want is our Christian friends to understand that entertainment is not good for you. Please, stop being entertained. Ask for content. Ask for reliable teaching. Get a question. Alaikum. Alaikum. Salam. Sheikh, I have... Is a bit of confusion with the, this Catholic people, as we know that these people are, you know, have been exempted from their sin, right? They have been given a blanket approval that you keep on doing sin, and Jesus has been crucified for your sin, and he has died, so and so. So, what is their funda behind going to churches and reading Bible? What these people are doing there? They don't need to, you know, do any kind of, you know. No reading and preaching and okay. they, they, should, exactly. they, they should go for, you know, a good picnic spot. The question is, why have Christians ever got all their sins removed? They've got a free ticket. They've got their bus tickets in their pocket. They've got full access. No problem. Why do they still go to church? What's the point? Well, because they choose to go to church because the priests and pastors and bishops and deacons have used this as a weapon in saying, if you don't have fellowship, then you will go astray and you'll get lost and you'll have the wrong teaching. But it doesn't make sense because they don't need to go to church because they're already saved anyway. So it doesn't matter what they do. So this is a contradictory statement speaking in two different tongues. One saying there's nothing you need to do. Other one saying, well, unless you stay in fellowship, unless you stay in communication, you won't grow and you'll go into error. Who cares if you go into error? You're already saved. So their whole idea is a bit silly. It's not well thought of, but it's a way to manipulate and control. And it's about money. It's all about money. This is what we're talking about. Stop the entertainment, start the teaching, and then you will see how many people actually stay in Christianity and how many people move up. They pass the mark to the back. Sheikh, uh, the Trinity concept uh, which the Quran speaks is of a Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. But uh, the Christians believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. How can we explain them? The Quran doesn't say we believe in the Trinity, and we don't believe that they won. But it talks about three people. The Quran speaks about three people. So that's very important that we don't agree with the Trinity. There's no such idea. Where the Bible speaks about not a Trinity, but hundreds of people that belong to a Godhead. So there's a Hare Krishna document, a book that comes out. It's called Back to the Godhead. It's a magazine that they pass out. Maybe Christians should have had that. 
because they've got Mary, who is the mother of God. They've got Jesus, who is the son of God. They've got God, who is God, the, the Father God. And they've got the Holy Spirit. So that's four, not three. But then you've got also Ephraim being called the son of God. Then you've also got Jerusalem being called the sons of God, sons and daughters of God. The angels are called the sons of God. So it's very, very confusing. The Trinity is not mentioned. We know this. The Christians know this. YouTube knows this. The whole world knows this. Trinity doesn't exist. It's only the diehards that hold on to it. It's the 21st century now. The Council of Churches in South Africa has thrown out the idea saying it's not even required anymore for you to believe in the Trinity. So we all know this. It's got, But the Bible and the Quran, they talk about Jesus, they talk about the Holy Spirit, they talk about all these things, but they have a different interpretation that their scholars read it. That's very important. We've run out of time. You're going to have to join us again next week, same place, same time. So for me, Arib Islam, and all of us here, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.